Hey guys, Starwatch Media here with Matt Wynn, the director of the short film The Brunchers at Hamptons Film Fest 2013. So Matt, uh, you're originally from London, now you've come across seas to the Hamptons. Uh, what's it like premiering your film here? Uh, well, I'm very excited, obviously, to uh, have the film. It's actually an East Coast premiere here. I had a West Coast uh, in LA a couple of weeks ago. But um, I'm really getting the impression that the audiences here are going to relate to this film because uh, the film is uh, the story of kind of the modern metropolitan obsession with doing the latest thing, being seen in the latest place, making sure your experience is better than anyone else's, whilst at the same time maybe being a little bit paranoid that somebody right over there is having a slightly better experience than you are. And I think it's, uh, it's a trope, it's, a, it's an obsession that people in the Hamptons can relate to just as badly as folks back in London can. Mm -hmm. So tell me about what the film is about. That's what it's about at its core, but you have some great actors. What's, what's the plot? It must be about brunching and being seen. Yeah, I mean, the story, it's a bit of a shaggy dog story. It's ultimately a story where nothing happens. I quite like to make stories where on the surface nothing happens, but actually by the time you get to the end you realise a lot has ha happened emotionally. So uh, it's about a couple who feel that they've kind of lost touch with their inner hipness. And people about five years younger than them are being a little bit cooler and a little bit more hip and know about the right places. And they decide one day, rather than going to their normal brunch place, they're going to try and get into the latest cool place to get to. Which is, turns out to be um, a project that is rent with disaster, you know. Uh, and it's extremely difficult. And they go around various different places. And while they're on this journey, uh, it's an opportunity for them to explore uh, their relationship, the relationships of their friends, which all turn out to be very dysfunctional. They have uh, a bit of a sort of philosophical discourse about modern metropolitan life, all the time being disappointed in the fact that one by one they fail to get into any of a, a series of uh, actually descendingly trendy places. So they start off trying to get into the hippest place and obviously they can't get in and the next hippest place won't let them in either. And finally a place that's only barely hip they can't, can't even get into. and. Uh, but they discover on that journey that there's, there's something better than being hip after all. So doing a movie about you know people trying to be hip, what was the research like? Did you go to the brunch spots? Like how did you know like what was hip? Well, sadly enough, I mean you know they, they do say um, write what you know, and uh, myself and my wife do like to have a bit of brunch from time to time. But we discovered one day. Uh, last year that we couldn't get into the coolest latest place to go to and uh, it was a bit of a disappointment and that's kind of where the story came from and we tried various places and all the time kind of posing that question why the hell do we care you know is the coffee at this place going to be any better than somewhere else you know uh, everybody in london eats shakshuka i don't know if is that a big thing in the East Coast? what is shakshuka sounds strange it shakshuka is like i think it's a palestinian or maybe moroccan egg dish and all the latest brunch places have shakshuka and you know this year it's shakshuka next year it'll be something else you know i'll bring shakshuka to la and i'll make it the hippest thing I bet, you know i bet in silver lake they have shakshuka already i'm pretty sure it's probably come and gone you know <laughs> right. um so you have some great actors in the film rufus sewell being among them um tell me about assembling this cast it seemed like you had a really intimate shoot going on we ha we've got an amazing cast. We've got Rufus Sewell, uh, we've got Natalie Dormer, who a lot of people know over here from Game of Thrones. She's one of the main actresses in that. And uh, she's actually also just been cast in The Hunger Games, which is shooting down in Atlanta at the moment. She wanted to be here, but unfortunately, she wasn't allowed to leave the set of The Hunger Games to come here, which is a shame. I tried to persuade her. Um, and we've got another great uh, English actor called Tom Burke, who is, uh, I think, will be known to American audiences next year because he is one of the three musketeers in a massive BBC production that's going on right now. So um, I did a bit of a sneaky thing with this. Um, I decided to work uh, with a, an actor, a friend of mine, who's also a producer. And one of the problems that a lot of filmmakers have, I think at any level, whether you're starting out, whether you're very established, is getting past agents. You know, what actors' agents or my agent or anybody else's agents, they don't really want to do that much work. They really just want to say no unless there's a lot of money on the table. So it's pretty good to kind of know people personally. So my producer is an actor, and we were just talking about rock and roll, mm -hmm. uh, which is where he got to know Rufus Sewell. Um, so they, he, he'd appeared in a production with Rufus. And um, actors like other actors, and they like working with people they trust. So 
Um, I wrote the script and was largely involved in the production. He got on the phone and got a lot of his actor friends involved and it was a pretty good uh, working combination. So this is a stepping stone to a feature film. So um, I think a lot of uh, filmmakers out there do that. They make a short film that's kind of a teaser for a larger project. Yeah. Um, so what is your advice on that journey? Because I think it's a smart road to take. Yeah, I think, you know, people don't want to take a risk, you know, um, at, at any level, whatever type, you know, whether you're making reality TV or a feature film or theatre or television, people hate taking risks. So they love to be able to see what they're going to get. I mean, I work in advertising, I do a lot of commercials, and, you know, the number of times you hear somebody say, we need somebody to do this dog commercial, but you've only done cats. If you can show me a cat, you can get the gig. So, you know, if you have an idea for a feature and there's a way that you can you know, bring as much to life for producers and finance people of what that thing is going to be, mm -hmm. then it certainly, um, it, it certainly can help, you know, uh, that path make it a little bit easier. So has the film premiered at the Hamptons yet? And if so, have people, what's the reception been like? Given that it is the Hamptons, I'm sure people can relate. Well, uh, the, um, the film is premiering on Sunday. Uh, it's playing Sunday and Monday, and it's playing next to another kind of a uh, food orientated movie called Tasting Menu. So right. I'm hoping, in fact, I'm pretty certain that a lot of foodie types will be out in force. And certainly uh, I had a little taster of Estia's down in Sag Harbor this morning. I don't know if you've been there. It's a great brunch place. So I know people in the Hamptons do like their brunch and certainly New Yorkers like their brunch. So um, I'm sure people uh, will hopefully come along. Uh, but I think like the other film, I haven't seen Tasting Menu, but you know, like a any films th on the surface, the surface subject matter of our film involves food or the search for food or the, the, the search for the latest food or sati satiation. But ultimately, you know, that's just the, the surface for a much deeper, more profound story about human relationships. Right. Well, congratulations on the film.